We're moving onward and we're switching from spring problems for showing us how to use uh, calculus to figure out work examples to something that I like to call a leaky bucket problem, which you'll see is pretty uh, self-explanatory from the name. Uh, but this isn't going to use Hooke's Law anymore, but it's still going to be the case that the force that's required um, to do the work involved is not constant. It's changing as a function of time, and we'll see how that comes out in this problem. So here we've got a bucket. The bucket itself weighs two pounds, but it's filled with water. Uh, starting out, it's got 30 pounds of water, but as is mentioned by the problem, uh, this bucket is leaky, and so it's losing water as a consistent, at a consistent rate as it's hoisted up into the air. And we want to take this um, bucket, and it's going to be attached to some sort of pulley system. We're going to raise it to the top of a construction site. And by the time we're done lifting it to the top of our construction site, there's only 25 pounds of water in the bucket inside the bucket, and we've lifted it 100 feet in the, into the air in order to make this happen. So the question is, how much work is done in the process of bringing the bucket to the top? Uh, and it says just ignore the weight of the rope or any kind of transit system that's involved. So for this, let me get out my little example that I've got here in paint. And first of all, I'm going to draw a picture of the problem. So I need a very good picture, but here I'm going to draw my bucket. It's going to be a square, and it's being lifted into the air, some sort of construction site. Oh. Lifted straight up into the air of some sort of construction site via some sort of pulley system. And if we were to take a measure from the ground all the way up to the top of the construction site, then this would be 100 feet. Not 10 feet, but rather 100 feet. That's that distance. And of course, the bucket is going to be filled with water. Let's see how fancy we can get here. So let's go back and let's dye the uh, bucket. It's filled with water, but it's leaking. It's got this little paintbrush tool, and it's leaking water out the bottom of it. Can't really tell there, but oh, it's leaking water. So we're losing water as it's moving up. And it started when we had the bucket on the ground. When we initially filled it, it started with 30 pounds of water inside. By the time the bucket reached the top, it was at 25 pounds. 30 pounds in bucket. Let me change that back to black just to be consistent here. And then when we ended, there were 25 pounds in the bucket. And the question is, how much work was done in the process of bringing the bucket to the top? So let's use a variable y here, and let's try to figure out, so y is how high we've lifted the bucket. So right here we'll put the letter y. Um, this is the height of the bucket. So in our picture, this is height y, this is how far we've lifted it and we're going to eventually lift it 100 feet. What we want to figure out is, at this particular height of y, if we stopped y and looked over this tiny, tiny time interval, or minuscule amount of height for what we were lifting the bucket, the work done over that tiny amount of inter, uh, uh, over that tiny interval would be essentially constant because the force would be essentially constant. So we'd be lifting this bucket a little height, a teeny tiny height of dy, such a tiny amount that we're lifting it over that distance where we get to assume that the force required to lift it is constant because we won't have lost very much water over that tiny tiny amount of height. We'll pretend we haven't lost any so that the force is constant. We'll figure out what the fo what force is required over that tiny distance in order to lift the bucket and then we'll add up all of the, the uh, different works that are sort of needed. Work at this height y, work at the next height y, and so on and so forth. So for us, what we need to figure out is if at height, let's put this in in text, but at height 0, when y is equal to 0, we've got 30 pounds of water in the bucket. This is start, height, weight. And then, when, we're a, when we've lifted the bucket 100 feet, then there, are, there is 25 pounds of water in the bucket, so this would be stop height weight. 
From this information, let's determine how much water we're losing, uh, or how much weight of the water we're losing, per tiny increment of distance. So what we're going to do to figure out how much we're using in a particular unit of time is we're going to do a change to the weight divided by the change in the distance, the way we would just kind of a rise over a run type thing uh, in a line problem. So what we'll have is we'll have 30 minus 25, all divided by 0 minus 100, which simplifies down as a fraction to 5 over 100 uh, with a negative sign there. So this is going to be negative 1 over 20, which is telling us how many pounds of water, pounds per foot. So each foot we go up, we're losing 1 20th of our weight, uh, that you know, pounds per foot. And what we're starting at, so that's the rate at which we're losing water. Let's talk about how much water we're actually losing. So when we plug in uh, a y value of 0, meaning that we haven't lost any water at all, we should be able to get 30 pounds in the bucket. So we're going to have some sort of equation down here, which is negative 1 over 20 multiplied by y plus some sort of constant is our b, and our constant would be thought about as our y-intercept, or how much water we have when we plug in no height at all, y is equal to 0, into this function. So this unknown constant of b should actually be a 30, so that when we plug in a y-value of 0, we have 30 pounds in here, and when we plug in a y-value of 100, 100 divided by 20 is 5, and we have this negative sign, so we would have minus 5 right here. We'd subtract that 5 from the 30, and we would end with this stop height and weight of 100 feet up into the construction site and 25 pounds of water. So this function right here, negative 1 20th y plus 30, is an equation that's telling us how much work is required to lift the water from the bottom of the construction site to the top. The thing we're missing is we're missing the two pounds that's always required in terms of force to lift the bucket. The bucket is two pounds and is always two pounds, two pounds forever and ever. It, it's the bucket itself is not losing anything, it's just the water that's losing something. So we have the plus 30 here separated, this negative 1 20th y plus 30 that's uh, representing the force that's required to lift the water and the plus 2 is this constant amount that's required in order to lift the bucket. And at every moment in time, no matter what y is, that'll always be 2. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that if we're setting up an integral to do this problem, curvy kind of integral, we're going to be adding up the equation that's representing our force, which is negative 1 over 20 times y, plus 32. That's the force that's required, and then we're going to multiply that by the distance, and that tiny distance that we're adding this up over is dy, the distance over which this force is constant. And then we're going to start adding at height y is equal to 0, and we're going to stop adding when we reach the top of the construction site, which is when y is equal to 100. And this is going to be the integral we need to do. Now, I don't want to do all the work of this um, quite by hand. It's going to be a little bit messy. So what I'm going to do to finish out this problem is I'm going to go to Mathematica and just have Mathematica get us a numerical answer now that we have an integral. So we open up Mathematica, start a new document, have it warm up on something very easy. 1 plus 1 is 2. See how long my computer does to do that. And let's enter in a function. So what we want to do is we want to integrate Let's ask Mathematica how to integrate to make sure we get the syntax right. It says integrate this function as x goes from here to here. We want a definite integral, which we do, so we want to integrate what function? Well, the function is negative 1 over 20 times y plus 32. And we want to integrate that as y is our value variable, and as y starts at 0, and stops at 100, and we want to get a value for that. 
and Mathematica tells us right away that the answer is 2950. Of course, that's 2950 without any units, according to it, and the unit that we're looking for uh, in this particular system of work is going to be foot-pounds. So our answer, according to Mathematica, via Mathematica, stretch this out a bit, is 2950 foot-pounds. We're done.